Hi there! In this video I'm going to introduce another new extension for SketchUp. Um, this one's called Scale by Tools. The uh, premise behind this is again that I had a bunch of scripts in uh, my book Architectural Design with SketchUp and my website sketchupfordesign.com where um, I figured I might as well package them up as a, uh, an extension so that more people can use it and I really hope you find this useful. So uh, you can see in this picture already what you can do with this on the very left here, the, the S um, variation in, in you know, different uh, scaling of, of items of these boxes uh, came from an image. It's basically the logo for my other extension, for the SketchUp News extension. Um, then on the right here you see that everything scales based on a power equation. It's actually a um, second power in one direction and a third power in the other direction. And then on the bottom here you see how this um, varies basically in two, both directions, in two directions, with the cosine equation. So there's some really cool stuff you can do with this uh, once you get the hang of it. And uh, you can use it to scale, um, which is of course in the name, but then you can also um, rotate items and you can displace items, you can move items. So I didn't put that into the name because translate by tools just didn't, didn't ring with me. <laughs> so I went with scale by tools, um, but you can do all of those other things as well with the same parameters, whether it's an image or whether it's a, a mathematical formula. This works in all kinds of orientations actually, and I'll give you a little bit of a background how that works, that you can actually uh, off axis get this to work. Um, so this is a, a basically a Z um, extrusion or, or scaling at an off axis collection of items. All of these here came from uh, images. There was a, just a cross, there was the S again, and then of course some kind of a ripple, water ripple basically. This is the pulled brick exercise or example that I um, have on my website, but you can do that now with this and I'll show you in a minute how you can do something like that. And then of course you know this dude. Um, you can basically take any kind of collection of, of faces and then extrude them um, or scale them or do all kinds of stuff with this. So it's, it's actually really powerful um, and I hope you can, you know, find it useful and create some cool stuff and if you do, let me know. I always like to see what people do with these. Anyways, so let's, let's get started. Um, you get the scale by tools in the usual locations. You can of course go to the extension warehouse from SketchUp and, ex and directly install it there. Um, it's also on my website and it's also on the Sketchucation plugin store and you can uh, download it through, through their tools as well. Once you have the tool um, then you have two options. One is of course this, this toolbar here, um, or you can go to tools, scale by tools, everything's right here. There's always a link to my help site, which is basically my blog, and you can always uh, leave comments there. Uh, let me know if there, something doesn't work right and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's get started. Let me show you how this works. Um, first tool is I wanna transform an object by image. So I want to scale or move or rotate uh, objects. What I have here is it's just a you know collection of little boxes in three different orientations so that I can test this out. Um, I actually grouped every single one of them and that's quite useful. It's not absolutely necessary but it's useful because once I get into this group here <clears throat> you see that in SketchUp uh, every group has uh, an orientation. And now you've got a new set of axes that are actually not parallel to my regular. You know, this is the ground is usually red green because I took this group and rotated and placed it up vertically. Now everything's a little crooked. And so now red green is actually the in plane axis of these guys here. So um, these axes are really useful and really important for this tool because any. Um, transformation, any any move, any scale, any, you know, whatever you do with these always references these planes. So keep in mind that you need to know, for example, what the red-green plane is and what the blue direction is. 
So the easiest way to doing that is take all your objects, group them, go into the group, find out what you have there, then highlight everything again, right here. So now I'm doing everything in this group context, but I, at least now I know what SketchUp's going to do in terms of axes, and now I can start a tool. So let's get started with the first one here, transform objects by image. Not many options, but you don't need many. <laughs> so the first option is really that you need to um, decide what you want to do, whether you want to do a uniform scaling or you want to scale in any of the three directions, whether you want to rotate about any of the three directions or whether you want to move things in any of these three directions. So you can always do one at a time, except for uniform scaling, of course, which takes three at a time. Um, but but you can then highlight things again and uh, do basically two operations, you know, moving things in red and moving things in green, maybe with two different images or two different um, equation parameters. So there's all kinds of really cool combinations you can do there. I'm gonna just work with uniform scaling for now, um, but I'll show you the other ones in a minute. Okay, so this is image based. So now I need to um, tell SketchUp where my image is gonna be. So in this case, the image will be in the plane of these objects. So that is the red green plane right here. That's that. And then you need an, a multiplier and the multiplier uh, depends on what you have up here. So if you pick scaling, then it's the scale factor. If you pick um, uh, uh, rotation, then it's the angle in degrees. And if you do motion, then it's the distance. Um, but as a, um, as a numeric value, not as a, as a distance value. So keep that in mind because uh, if, uh, I'll show you this in a second, but if you do a rotation, for example, to a maximum of 45 degrees, this should read 45. So if I do a scale factor of two, then the maximum that this gets scaled is twice. Okay, now I'll click on okay. And then you need a picture um, that you're gonna work from and just keep things simple. I'm just going to start with this black and white cross. And when you do that, you'll find out, of course, that, well, <laughs> black is zero, white is one. Um, it doesn't matter whether you use a, um, whether you use a, a, a grayscale <clears throat> or color image. Internally, uh, whichever image you use will get turned into grayscale. So you don't have to worry too much about it. So if I pick my S right here, which has a red background, obviously, and I say, okay, then you'll see, ta-da, there's that. Um, you can already see there, there are some tricks that you may want to apply to to working with images. So you, you often, you know, basically scaling is based on where the object is based. So this particular dot of sorts up here, this box hits the top edge of this S. And so it looks a little iffy, you know, having it stick out like that. Um, let me just undo this. Go back there, go back here. And you can see already, you know, if you want to have smoother gradients, then you may want to experiment a little bit with blurring the image first. So once you do that, of course, then all the transformations will be a little more smoother. You can see up here is a real nice transition up there and, and down here as well. So, so uh, this may or may not be useful for you, but keep in mind that that's what you need to do. And then again, you know, um, you have to get the image orientation correctly because if you pick a wrong one, then it's kind of like looking at an image from the side. Um, you're going to get some iffy result <laughs> that makes no sense at all. And again, this is based on the angle that you have there. All right, so that's that. Um, well, let me show you the, the other options. So if I did, for example, um, rotate, I need to rotate about blue. And if I wanted to have my maximum 45 degrees, keep my image orientation the same. Uh, which one are we gonna take? Well, let's, let's take the plus one. Well, no, let's, let's do the S. Might as well. Then you can see here, it's a little hard to see, but you can see how this now rotates and you can kind of make out an S here. It's a little hard. <laughs> but but that's how that works. 
And if you want to, um, let's do four. If you want to scale just in blue, for example, I extrude this. Um, yeah, maybe a ripple. There you go. You can do that. Anyways, completely up to you what you want to do with it. <laughs> and again, like I said earlier, you know, this works in any of these orientations. If I go to this orientation there, now again, I have to keep in mind where my axes are. So the red green axis is still in the plane because again, I copied this. Um, and then if I do my, well, let's just do the same right there, then it'll, it'll work that way now. So this is where it gets interesting actually in terms of having things randomly oriented or, you know, uh, not not orthogonally oriented. So here is a good example for that. So if I were to highlight these and apply exactly the same tool that I just had, I'm going to do the plus so that is a little obvious. Then this happens. And this may or may not be what you want, but it doesn't make sense in my case because um, the image basically gets applied parallel to the axes. So before you do this, right click on the axis, click on place and create a proper local reference system just like this here. Just like you would for, you know, um, in SketchUp anyways. And once you do that, you're golden because now you can work in that coordinate system and everything extrudes that way. There you go. So that makes sense, right? Um, now, image is one option. Another one is, of course, our formulas. <clears throat> so next is the second button here where I can go ahead and apply um, a power equation. And, and the idea is basically <clears throat> that uh, you have the formula as shown here. You know, it's uh, a multiplier, then there's um, a power factor and then of course you go to the power of something and if you have a power of two then it's obviously a, um, a, a parabola or parabolic if it's three you know it'll, it'll have this s type shape kind of thing and so then you know the multiplier is the number that gives you the maximum scaling the maximum rotation and angles and the maximum motion in uh, your your base unit <clears throat> so if I do scaling two, that's that makes sense. Power factor, you know, you can experiment a little bit. I'm just gonna switch that back to one. Um, the power I'm gonna leave as two. That one, well, I might as well do one. And then the, in the other direction here, in the uh, green direction, I have a third power. So now you can combine those. And again, I don't have to do anything in blue because it wouldn't make sense. So I'm gonna leave that as zero, as long as the first value is zero. Oh, sorry, that's not the first. As long as the first value is zero, you're good. Anyways, just click on OK, and then you get something like that. You will also get some negative values there, of course. Uh, and I should make this a little bit more pronounced. So then I think if we do that, it gets a little bigger. Those kind of things. So you can do that. Um, Experiment with the numbers as much as you like. Uh, am I getting it right? Oh, no, that's too much. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. There you go. Anyways, I'll leave it up to you play to play with that. Um, uh, the equation is uh, explained a little more on my website, so you can actually make sense of this all. But you can see here there's basically three factors in the red direction, three in the green direction, three in the blue direction, and then there's an offset at the end. The next button gives you kind of the same, but um, as either a sine or a cosine wave. So I'm going to go with cosine and I'm going to have an amplitude in red of one. Uh, let's keep here in one. Let's do that and then set the third one to zero. Let's see what we got. I can barely see it. Oh, wait, I think I moved it, right? 
Yeah, this was move motion. That makes no sense. Okay, so here we go. There you go. That's much better. So this is uniform scaling, but like you just saw accidentally, um, you can move things, you can rotate things based on these formulas as much as you want to. And again, you know, play with the parameters now because this is a um, trigonometric uh, function. You're gonna get two parameters right there plus plus an offset at the end, and two of these are in one direction the red direction green direction blue direction so feel free to have some fun with that and it'll be good now um there are some applications like the pulled brick example where it gets a little interesting so now here with this pulled brick example um actually yeah, let me see nope that's the one that's where i get some shadows um what i did was basically i named headers separately so that I can highlight all the headers and also group them. So you can approach this whichever way you want to, um, you know, uh, but in my case here, the stretchers are, are not selected. And then again, you know, you kind of want to find out what your reference system is. So we're in the green blue reference system. And if we did now in red, we don't need anything. Um, although, wait, now this is displacement. We want to displace it motion in red and amplitude. Let's do it six inches so that it's visible. And then we'll see what happens. There you go. Well, now it's kind of <laughs> bumped out a little bit, but uh, you get the point. Actually, if I undo this, um, and switch is from cosine to sine, it'll be a little bit, a little bit better right there. All right, so now you can see what happened. Of course, that you got the variation. These get pushed in the red direction parametrically. Now, of course, you know, I'm kind of creating holes here, <laughs> so I uh, wouldn't want to go this full six inches, but but you get the point. You can do some really nice things that way. Okay, so that's that. And then the last set of tools, the, the last two here, um, allow you to either push-pull by image or move vertices by image. So I got a few faces and vertices here. I do push pull by image. Again, I can pick uh, minimum extrusion, maximum extrusion. In this case, those are distances. And I need to figure out where the image orientation is. So this is gonna be a red, blue. Right here, there's red, there's blue. Once I do that, um, well, let's do this one. You can see this happening. Um, and then the same thing or similar thing happens when you do the last one, move vertices. Moving vertices also needs to have the proper image orientation, but now we're taking each one of these, these edge points, the vertices, and we're moving them in uh, uh, either one or all three directions. So now in my case here, I wanna move them into the green direction. So blue is gonna become zero and green, hmm, let's say, foot so that I can see it and then okay and then I'm gonna pick that and we got basically a surface that now has the the image any kind of surface uh, will get you know basically adjusted and creates triangles automatically as needed but um, you most probably can see already how how this works. So those are a bunch of the functions there. I might actually post a few other videos because there's some really neat things you can do with that, um, uh, especially for 3D printing and, and creating objects and so on and so forth. But this gives you a bit of an intro to the scale by tools, my newest extension. And um, I hope you like it. Let me know if you run into issues um, or uh, you know show off some of the work you're doing with this. All right, I hope you enjoy it. Um, see ya.